All right, great. Well, now we're going to get a little bit more um, specific to your data set, and I see sure. some attributes that I really love. One of them is Crunchbase rank, and I'm sure I can find the solution of what that <laughs> actually is somewhere online, but can you explain how the Crunchbase rank works and, and how sure. it's utilized by customers? Sure, absolutely. So Crunchbase rank is a proprietary score that we assign to both people and companies in Crunchbase. And essentially, it's a fluid score that's always changing. And it takes into effect 20 different sort of inputs. But some of those high-level inputs are searches people are making on Crunchbase for that company, um, any recent funding rounds that were announced, recent news articles or mentions, um, their relationship with other companies within our graph. Um, we have sort of a spider web of a graph so you can see previous founders at Facebook, right? And if they went on to launch a new company, you can see that rich history and not just a static line of data. So we look at, at the relationship of the graph. Um, and then we'll also look at uh, just general trends we're seeing. Has the company been acquired? Um, has there been a lot of edits on that profile in the last 30, 60, 90 days? So uh, we do have a lot of people. It's one of our first forays into sort of proprietary trends. Um, we've had people fighting on Twitter over how to <laughs> get their crunch base rank higher. Um, and the nice thing is it's, it's very church and state. So that's a fluid score based on data. Um, there's no paid sponsorships or anything like that. Yeah, no, we've, we've actually toyed with using it in our lead scoring and in our assignment rules internally. Um, so I'm wondering if there are other fields or attributes besides rank that you offer that you think customers should use when building an ideal customer profile analysis? Ooh, that's a good one. Um, I, I'd have to say funding data just because it's one of our most unique ones. Um, I think an interesting one and in we're going to have more releases the rest of this year. That's going to double down on, on building your ideal customer profile is one is, is doing a search through the company descriptions that we provide to get very, very niche on those profiles. And for example, right, let's, let's say you're a sales team and you're selling into sort of HR tech companies and you're looking for all of the new HR tech companies all the companies we have in Crunchbase have third-party descriptions. So you can actually run a search and look for either short-form description or long-form description of anyone that describes himself as an HR tech platform. And you can also cross-reference that against the industry tags we're having. And then, if you get a, and then if you do get that list of, let's say, 600, then you could filter it by CV rank to say, hey, this is a great list. I'm going to take the top 10 and go after them this week because next week that might be a different list of 10 companies to go after. And what we're telling you at CB rank is there's something happening at this company. We can't tell you exactly what, but something's bubbling up at this company and it's a good fit to try to reach out and have a conversation right now. Yeah. W one of the ways that we recently used the data is, so we pulled the customer list. We ran it through Crunchbase, and obviously we wanted to go right to capital raise. But what we found before that was that there were certain head, like um, private equity companies or investment, you know, funds that were common within our customer base. Um, and so we we found that was really important. It's like, okay, who invested in them? Because if we're going to go out and build a target list, it may be easier to target you know, a, a portfolio of companies that meet those other like industry size of company, those same generic kind of profiles, but also have a tie into one of these growth equity funds. Right. And then we went a step further like, okay, and ha when was the last time they were, when were they acquired? You provide that date. And when was the last funding date? Uh, and what was the last funding amount? And all these things started helping us take a list of like a thousand perfect companies that, you know, based on generic profiles down to two, 300 that, you know, were part of a fund that we had already had success in. They had recently raised capital and that recent investment was larger than a certain amount. And that was actually helping drive the model. So um, yeah, I thought, you know, any other unique use cases you think of as we go along here would be great. 
Um, that's how we did it. Um, I think John, we're ready. We're going to get you on the payroll. That's an incredible <laughs> use case. Um, and yeah, I think what you're bringing up is something too that like the power of understanding relationships within your database, right? And understanding if you have an overlapping an investor or if the co-founder and the nice thing is like there's small sort of hidden nuggets within our database of we actually track, you know, where a founder went to school, right? So you can see, you know, maybe they went to Michigan and you know someone who went to Michigan and you can use that towards your outreach. We also track all the social profiles. We track if they're board members on companies. So the spider web can keep growing and you can use it to your advantage. And the, and the use case you described is a fantastic one. And what we want to do is help your at bats and your conversion rates. So instead of a spray and pray to a thousand accounts, you might have 15, but you might set up meetings or conversations with eight out of the 15. And that's what we want to help our customers do is just get smarter with the way they prospect um, through uncovering some of those unique relationships in our database. That's really cool. Yeah, I've been trying to educate our users because, you know, we do lead routing and data processing. And I'm like, hey, I, I see your lead assignment rules and, you know, your account assignment rules and they have generic segmentation parameters like industry, employee size, revenue, geography. Um, and, and I see like a lot of SMB mid-market enterprise segments uh, where there are companies that, I would personally consider mid-market that don't have mid-market revenue. And I may consider that because they have a really high crunch base rank and they raised $300 million recently. Right. But what I'm trying to get out of here is how do I advise those customers that I want to incorporate capital, uh, um, capital um, raised into assignment rules to segment the, the amount of dollars raised into SMB, mid-market, and enterprise? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of debate around that. And I, I think for us, we, we, we've seen a lot of customers actually switch off estimated annual revenue even as a, a proxy for SMB versus mid-market to funding. And maybe it's, you know, hey, if they've raised up to 100 million, you know, it's an SMB play or maybe mid-market once it hits 75 million. That's up for debate, and I, I'm, not want, I'm not educated enough to have a stance on it. What we do know is when a company does raise funding, we know that they've secured that money, it's in the bank, and they just told their investors, hey, we're going to grow the chart up and to the right. They have really, really large targets they need to execute on. And for us, right, like with everything that's happened this year, revenue estimates and goals are just thrown out the window. It can't be a good proxy for understanding what the size and impact is versus confirmed funding that's in the bank of that startup. And they are going to deploy that money and by hell or high water, they are going to try to grow. Right. So for us understanding of like, Hey, let's look at maybe a recent win you've had with a recently funded company and understand maybe how many seats did you have or did, were you able to sell into a company that just raised 20 million? versus 200 million. And then you can almost do a reverse mapping of, hey, if we're gonna sell 20 seats, this is gonna be an SMB play for up to X amount of funding. Versus later, hey, I'm selling 200 seats, but it's only companies that have raised $50 million. Maybe that is a mid-market play. So it's really gonna map back to individuals and, and how they go about selling. Um, but it's an incredible proxy for understanding and mapping out sort of that territory. I'm actually glad you went with that answer instead of trying to, you know, put it into a bucket is go back to your customer <laughs> database, compare yeah. some wins to it and see, you know, for you, what it, what it looks like. Um, that's very smart. 